Hi everybody, uh, this is uh, Misha Softier, and um, <clears throat> welcoming you uh, to this Tuesday night edition of Studying the Word. And so tonight we've got a good uh, lesson. We're going to be talking about the blessings of contentment. Now, <clears throat> this is actually a really important uh, message. And so I want to pray and I really want everybody that's uh, tuning in with me uh, to pray and ask the Lord really to speak to your heart. Uh, it's my prayer that we don't just hear this, but that every message that really comes, that we really get it um, into our spirits, that, that we get it inside so that it really becomes a part of us. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, that you will, uh, Lord, help us to hear this word like Jesus said, hear with hearing. He who has ears, let him hear. Father, let, it, let us get it within our spirits. Your words are spirit and they're life and they create life. Father, I ask that every spirit of distraction be bound. Lord, that you open up our hearts to be able to receive. Lord, that you open my mouth, Lord, to be able to speak under your anointing. Lord, not my words, but yours. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, and I thank you for it. I pray your guidance in this tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> folks, so uh, there, there's a lot that I could say just leading out about this. Um, I want to get into the announcement part first real quickly. If you're watching me on Facebook uh, Live, please do me a favor. Uh, hit the like and the share buttons because that's our way of getting the word out to others. Okay, the like from my end attracts the uh, people that are my friends and uh, in the public that view our broadcast on Facebook Live, <clears throat> but for each one of you, all of you have friends on your Facebook page that um, I don't have, but you could reach them if you share the word. So I appreciate it if you'd share it. For those that are watching on YouTube, please look down below the broadcast or look below the, uh, uh, the list. You can go right over here to my name if you want, and you can search all the messages I have there, and just hit the subscribe button. And if you do that, it will open up the door for a lot of other people to hear the word. And that's what we want to do. Uh, we're posting all our messages on YouTube, and, and God is really blessing. We're getting some really good response. And, you know, before I get into this, folks, I really want to thank you, every one of you. Um, we've got so many people that are following our program and that have been following the um, um, study in the word. And it's just growing, and the audience is growing. And I'm hearing from people all over the world that are watching. And I've already said that we've heard from people in different industries and even from Washington, D.C. and places like that. People watch these uh, messages. There are people that are hungry and they're looking. They may not understand exactly what it is that they're looking for, but they're <clears throat> seeing the futility of the world as it exists today. <clears throat> the futility that's taking place in our country and... Um, they're looking for an answer, folks. There's an empty spot in every person's heart that was designed to only be filled by a Christ. You know, I've said it before and, and when I preached that Mick Jagger tried and he tried and he tried, but he couldn't get no satisfaction. And so many of us in this world, we have tried and we have tried and we have tried all the things <clears throat> that um, <clears throat> the media and television and, and everything we read tells us is going to make us happy so we think riches and uh nice homes and nice cars and the right relationship and all these other types of things if we just had this or we just had that it would make us happy but folks the uh, highest rate of suicide is among affluent people that have spent their lives trying to get what people told them would make them happy only to get it all and find out that they're still empty inside that can only be filled <clears throat> by Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, you know, to, uh, if you're you don't know the Lord tonight and you're listening, to make that decision uh, to surrender, accept your li uh, Christ into your life, repent of your sins, meaning that you're willing to turn away from Him with His help and ask Jesus into your life, and He'll 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 catch you and He'll clean you. And don't worry about that. Okay, God will take care of you. And then make that decision and just serve Him. And, and, and walk with them and, and find a good Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. Amen? All right, so 
Um, uh, let's just go ahead and get into this so we don't want to take too long. And I want to begin uh, this evening um, in the book of Job, I think. And uh, let's start in verse, uh, in chapter 1. I just want to read uh, verse uh, 13 through 21. Now, uh, and, and I just want to get into one scripture, really, but I want to lay the backdrop for it because it deals with contentment. And, and folks, it's very hard sometimes to be content in the situations that we're in. Um, I'm going to say some things uh, about that in a minute, but I want to go ahead and read this first. Okay, so beginning in verse 13, now there was a day when... Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking. And they were drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with, with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking, wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. <clears throat> then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. Wow. He fell to the ground after all of that happened and worshipped. Rather than, than shake his fist at God and curse God, he worshiped God. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Or the Lord giveth, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Folks, that is a very, very hard thing to say. Okay, in the midst of that. Think of all the things that happen. Have you ever been in situations in your life, maybe not that extreme, but where one thing seemed to happen after another thing seemed to happen and another thing seemed to happen? Now, here is the question. Do you think that Job was happy about what occurred? Naturally, your answer is going to be no. I don't think anybody could be happy going through tragedies like that. And maybe in your life tonight, as you're watching me, you're going through some difficult things and you're, you're not happy about it. But here's the question. Can a person be happy and can they be content? Or can a person be sad and can they be content at the same time? Maybe the latter question is the better question. Can a person be sad and still be content? The answer to that question is yes. I have no doubt that Job was sad about the things that occurred in his life, but he still had a contentment in his spirit, okay? There was a contentment. You can be sad, not happy about uh, the trials that are going on in your life, but still be spiritually and still be mentally content. That is what, folks, a, a true relationship with Christ gives you. That is what the rest of the world doesn't have. They don't have the peace that passes all understanding that guards our hearts and our minds. And, and, and so they try to deal with it in different ways. When difficult things happen, they go to alcohol, they go to drugs, they go to sex, they go to other things, things to distract them because there is no contentment. There's no, no happiness, no joy. They go and they try to get certain things to fill a void in their heart. As I said in the beginning, that was only 
designed in every person that was ever born to be filled by Jesus Christ, to be filled by God, be, to be filled by Christ because God so loved the world, as we know in John three sixteen, that he what sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting and eternal life. See, Job knew this. Now, Christ had not come, Christ had not died on the cross for our sins or shed his blood, but but bulls and goats and, and sheep were already being sacrificed not to remove our sins, but to cover our sins until that day that the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth came, and that's Jesus Christ, and, and, and shed a perfect undefiled blood that was given to us through the virgin birth on the cross for us. And we need to understand that, folks. These are fundamental uh, things, fundamental doctrines in the area of Christianity, but something all of us have to understand. Contentment is very happy. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, very, uh, yeah, it is. It's a very happy thing to have, but it's a very important thing. Okay? Contentment is, is a very important thing to have in our lives. I, I, I'm, I, I'm happy in my life that I, I, I can say that I, I'm, I feel content. Um, I want to go to from here to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Okay, let's just go there for a minute. I'll pull this all together for you, but I want to read some fundamental scriptures um, that I, I think it, it's important. And if you have your uh, 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 pen and paper, uh, you know, or even in, at the back of your Bible, or you can underline, write, write some of these scriptures down. Hebrews 13, 5, uh, it reads as follows. <clears throat> Let me make sure I have this. Oops, wrong. Oops, sorry, you got to excuse me. I'm in the wrong chapter. Okay, so that happens all the time. Um, okay, Hebrews. Let's go over there. I was way off, way in the, another end of the, another end of the book here. All right, but that'll give you time to get something to write with if you want, and um, and, and everything. And I'm reading just so that you know. I'm reading out of the King James ver, uh, the New King James version of the Bible today. And so if you've got that, that's great, you know. And if you don't, you can sure track along probably in any other translation, and I, I believe you'll get quite a bit out of this. Okay, so. Hebrews 13, 5 reads as follows. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Now listen to this, okay? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, see folks, there are, are many of us, and there are many, I, I, I hate to say, uh, in ministry, okay, that covet what somebody else has. They're not content. They've not learned the peace and the beauty, the satisfaction, the joy, the uh, the, the peace uh, of God that comes with contentment. And so they're always straining and looking for something else. And, and here the Word of God says no. It says that we're to be content with the things that we have for He Himself, the Lord Himself, it says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Now, I want to focus real, really on the word forsake. In other words, God is not going to um, uh, forget about you. All right? You don't need to covet anything that anybody else has. The Lord is not going to forget about you. You don't need to covet authority. You don't need to covet a position. You don't need to be position hungry. And I, I see that as a big problem in um, in ministry, you know, today, um, and one of the things that that we really have to to learn, not only in ministry in Christianity as a whole, but certainly in ministry, I've, I've seen it, is that we must learn contentment uh, because the world and and religion too. And this is why I bring in the issue of ministry. Okay, even Christianity. Okay, uh, unfortunately, okay, the world and Christianity. Um, abuses materialism and it covets position. Now it's a hard hard word maybe to, 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 to take but listen to what I'm saying. Okay, instead of being content what we see in the world 
is being transferred more and more into the church today. And many of God's, uh, uh, I would say supposed ministers, but many of his ministers, many of his professed ministers, okay, have not learned the peace and the art of contentment. And so they begin to abuse or covet materialism. They begin to abuse or covet position. One of the big things that I see in ministry is, is materialism, wanting to be rich, wanting to have the nicest house, nicest car, all the things that the people, that the Gentiles, the people in the world want. They want it. And we, we, we're not to go out, the church is not to go out into the world and become like the world, but we're to go out into the world and make disciples or to teach. That's what the Great Commission is, folks. We're to teach others and bring them into that relationship with Jesus Christ. But what is happening is the reverse is taking place. And this is one of the reasons why the church in the United States of America today is so impotent. Because we have men, supposed men of God, that people that have either been placed or put themselves in a place of authority in churches, okay, that instead of doing what I just said and bringing people into a relationship with Christ, are going are trying to have it both ways. They want to play church on Sunday and Wednesday. They like they want an audience. They want an offering. But they want but but they also want all the fine things in life. Okay, everything that the world has. They're not willing to be content with what they have. They're they're not willing to make a sacrifice for anything. But instead of bringing people in, they're going out and becoming like the people in the world, and then taking those people in the world and saying, "Come to my church, and we can all be." alike but there's no change there's no real revelation of christ there's nothing happening in the lives of people if you go into a church folks and people are not being changed and there's not a change taking place in the lives of uh, of the people that are there there's a problem that's there people's lives ought to change your relationship with god today ought to be different than what it was yesterday or what it was six months ago or five years ago or 30 years ago and it shouldn't be worse, it should be better. And that doesn't just go for the, the Christian that's attending church somewhere. Okay, but this goes for the pastors and ministers too. And, and there are pastors and ministers that are watching me tonight. I know who some of them are, okay? And there's some good ministers that are watching me. But there are also some that are out there that, that I, I don't know. And I, I know they watch. And you're going to have to ask yourself this question, Okay. They, they do it in politics. Are we better off today than we were four years ago? Well, you're going to have to ask yourself a question, too. Am I better off today in my relationship with God than I was four years ago? Or than I was 20 years ago or 30 years ago or two years ago? Is there growth? Is there change? Do you have anything within you to offer anybody else out there? Because there are so many people that are hungry and want to believe, but they are seeing a lack of contentment in those that minister. They are seeing covetousness. They are seeing those that are world grabbers, grabbing at everything else that are out there, and then they're scratching their heads and wondering, what is the difference between them in this church, those that profess themselves to be Christians, and me? Where is the difference? There needs to be a difference. People need to see. The Bible says they shall see your good works. S-E-E. They shall see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not hear about it. See it. Okay, we've got too many ministers. We've got too many Christians that have a talk a good game, but no one is seeing the fruit of it in their lives. And so it's become a turnoff. Folks, you know, contentment is, uh, is, is at the root of, of, of much of this. And we need to understand it. We need to, to, to learn it. Because God is not going to forsake you. Some of you are worried about position. When am I going to be the pastor, the senior pastor of the church? How long do I got to serve as a deacon or do this or do that? Uh, how long do I got to sit on the front row of the church? And Well, you know, folks, okay... God is not going to forsake you. He is not forgetting about you. There are times that we're all set upon a shelf as God works certain things in our spirits, but we can all go out and do the work, as I've said many times here and many times in churches that I speak at, we can all go out and do the work of an evangelist. The Bible says that, and it's something that we should do. There is not an excuse in the world for a person 
not to be active in some way in ministry. Okay, whether you're speaking from the pulpit or not, you can all go out and do the work of an evangelist. In fact, in the scriptures, we're encouraged to do so. You can read that in the Great, uh, uh, the Great Commission. And uh, I believe in, 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 you can read it in Mark, you can read it in Matthew. And there are other places, I'm sure, where the Bible encourages us to go out and to, to be fruitful. You know, not to sit on our the talents that, and, and I'm not talking about talents as in show business. I'm talking about talents, in, 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 but, but we can look at it that way. A talent was a, 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 a money, a coin or something, and, and, and one was given five, and another was given ten, I think, and one was given one. The one with ten produced a twenty, one with five produced a ten, and then duplicated uh, uh, what, what he was given by his master, but the, uh, there, there was the one guy that just decided, you know what, this master's really demanding, and I don't want to blow it, so I'm just going to sit on it, and when he comes back, I'm going to give it back to him. So he gives it back to him, and the master looks at him and says, you are, you are a lazy <laughs> servant, and he judged him. He says, take that talent away from him and give it to the guy that's taken what he's had and so he's reproduced. Folks, God is calling us to reproduce. Okay, but, and so all of us can do the will of God. All of us can get busy. Okay, we don't have to just sit and we don't have to covet. You know, God will not forsake you. Just get in motion. The Bible says if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. So all we've got to do is take a step and God will take two steps. All right, so let's go from there, and I want to read one of the really good scriptures that, that I think will kind of nail this down, and then anything else I have to say, I'll say. I didn't really plan how I was going to present this. I just knew the topic that the Lord wanted me to speak about. It came very quickly today. Uh, this morning when I woke up, I asked the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak about today? And then and the Lord just brought it to me right then, the blessings of contentment. And so, you know, I put the scriptures together, and here we are. And um, so turn to uh, the uh, First Timothy, not Second Timothy, but First Timothy uh, chapter um, uh, 6. And we're going to read verses 6 and 7, okay? Now listen to this, okay? And listen, listen closely. Okay, now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Let's just stop there. Okay. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. As 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 opposed to 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 what? Um. There are those that think that by coveting. By coveting something, and we're talking to Christians here in this in this in this scripture, Paul is trying to minister to Timothy, and 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 uh, mentor him. But there are those in ministry that think that uh, godliness is not enough, and you, you you know, and yet you have to ask yourself that question: Is is God really enough for me? Is God enough for you to be content? No matter what's going on around you, all hell could be breaking loose like it was with Job. Job bows down and he worships. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He worships. He worships him. We see in the previous scripture that we're not to, 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 be, to covet anything, but we are to be content where we're at with what God has given us knowing that he never leaves us or forsakes us. He doesn't forget about us. And here we see that godliness, godliness, serving the Lord along with contentment, the two go together. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You actually promote yourself. You actually promote your faith. You actually promote God's blessings in your life when you learn to uh, seek godliness and to walk in a godly, righteous way and remain content doing it. Not striving and looking for position or striving and looking for materialism. And those are things that, folks, the, the church has got to dump. We have got to throw that stuff aside and be genuine. We need to be real and really begin to seek God with all of our heart. I want God to be real in your life. I want God to be real in my life. I don't want to 
play? What, what play a game? What are we doing here? If we just go online every Tuesday night and we do a study in the Word and 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 or, and we appear in, in church on Sunday mornings or Sunday evenings and on Wednesday night and we go through the motions of all this stuff, we spend hours doing it and nothing in our lives ever changes. We never uh, grow. We never come into any kind of real revelation with the Lord. And, and we spend our whole life um, being religious. And then at the same time, coveting what everybody else has. We want what Mr. Jones down the street has and what Mary down the, you know, at work has or, or something like that. Or we want, like I said already, we want to get into money and we want... Um, uh, relationships and nice cars and houses and all we begin to be in but and, and and look folks i'm not saying god has anything against having a good relationship having a nice home uh having some money or anything like that but he has an issue when we put those things ahead of him god has to be first in our lives he's a jealous god he needs to be first and he deserves to be first why because he sent his only begotten son to die for you and for me so that we could have everlasting life when we breathe our last breath here the lord returns here we go to heaven folks we don't go to the other place called hell we go to heaven because he has uh, atoned for every one of our sins on the cross, through the cross, if we're willing to accept it, and we're willing to accept him, we're willing to make him our, the Lord and Savior of our lives. Folks, we have everything to be happy about and no valid reason to covet anything but just to seek after him. Amen? I really like the, that last verse. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Wow. Wow. You could just underline that. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, there, there's a scripture that says we're not to use the gospel for sordid gain. Those, those are the that's, that's exact word. Those are exact wording. And we're not to use the gospel as a means of sordid gain. Sordid means greed, greed, greed centered. Sordid gain. But there are those that do. There are those that use the gospel for sordid gain. They, they take scriptures and bend them and twist them and manipulate them to say what they want to say so they can collect a big offering. I'll give you some holy water, you know, or give you a, a sheet with my blessing on it. Send me a $1,000 in, 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 if, in, to, today, today in the mail and you'll be healed and things like that. Folks, that's not right. We don't, I, we don't peddle the gospel. The gospel is not for sale. We don't use it to for sordid gain so that I can go out and buy myself a, a $16 million mansion or drive a Bentley and, and, you know, and, and have one for every one of my family members and on top of that, uh, three or four airplanes to use. If I, if I want those things, I can go out and work for those things myself. But, but, but we're not to, to use the gospel. We are not to take it from other people. Okay, this is, folks, important because we there are people that are out there. I see them on YouTube all the time. It's, it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing to have a, a person that's, that's barely a believer, <laughs> almost sometimes, point these faults out to people in the church that are spirit-filled that ought to know better, but are actually guilty of doing it. That is embarrassing. I go on YouTube. I'm a spirit-filled uh, Pentecostal Christian minister. I go on YouTube sometime and I see ministers that don't have any re revelation of the Holy Spirit. They know nothing about the gift of tongues, prophecy, or anything else. But they have enough common sense, okay, you know, just to pick up the Word of God right here and know the difference between right and wrong. And, and I see some Spirit-filled ministers that ought to know better that don't have the sense of a... Of a don't have the sense of a duck and are misleading people with, 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 with a lot of baloney. That they, they, not only do they refuse to be content, but they mislead other people. God has not called us to that, and it, just, it embarrasses me. <clears throat> it embarrasses me. But it makes me all the more determined, and I always have been. I can say this, that I have never, in, in all my years of ministry, I have never compromised the word of God. I have failed in many areas in my life, 
in 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 the past, and I probably fall and fail sometimes still in some things. I mean, I'm not perfect. The Bible says, if any of us say there is no sin in us, that we're liars. The truth is not in us. Look, there are, we we make mistakes, okay? But I when I when I went into ministry, I prayed, and I asked God, Lord, whatever you do, <laughs> Lord, please don't ever let me compromise in the ministry and in your word. And I have to the very best of my ability and to the very best of my conscientiousness and and honesty, always presented the word of God in a truthful manner. I have never looked for anything for myself. I have not sought uh, any any recognition. I have not uh, collected money uh, in, in ministry. Maybe I took offerings when I pastored a church like we all do so we could pay the the bills and things like that. But, but after I, I quit pastoring and I moved on to evangelistic ministry all over the place and then an apostolic gifting to, to many churches that, are, that I've been either planted myself or been involved in planning and, 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 and every, and to this very, and even doing these broadcasts, I never ask anybody for, uh, for an offering. I never request at the end of my messages send me donations here send donations to our ministry. Although I could I could do that and it wouldn't be uh, be be coveting and it certainly wouldn't uh, uh, be a lack of contentment, uh, you know. But but what I'm trying to say is there 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 are some though that take this way over the top and go way way beyond that. And they are using the church and the people in the church as a personal piggy bank because they lack contentment. And there are those that aren't in ministry but are Christians that are essentially doing the same thing. They're using God as a personal piggy bank. They think that God, that Jesus Christ is a genie. <laughs> he said, what do you mean by that? Well, they think if I, if I rub them enough and go like that, and then poof, out of the bottle comes the Lord, and he says, yes, master, to us. What are, what are your wishes? And we give him three wishes. I wish for a beautiful girlfriend, a fancy car, and a nice house. <laughs> and then three more wishes, if, um, or something like that. Look, folks, God is not a genie in the bottle where we do that. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so this is where we need to be content. And folks, there are some Christians, and there are some ministers in ministry that have it backwards here. And they treat the Lord like he's a genie in a bottle. They don't know the Lord. And they need to get, some of these people need to get saved. And they really need to seriously consider their salvation. Maybe they say, well, you know, I got saved. When did you get saved? Well, back back in when I was 16 years old, 12 years old, 11 years old, I asked the Lord in my life, yeah, now you're 40 or 50 years old. What are you doing? You may have maybe walked away from it. We need to analyze this. Now you think, well, that seems unscriptural. That seems awful harsh. Is it? The Bible says that we're to examine ourselves to see if we're of the faith. We need to every now and then take a look. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to probe our hearts and see if we're really of the faith. Are we still walking in the way that we should? One of the things that I wanted to touch on is also this. I just want to make a point here. And I think I I said it but I want to make sure that I said it, you know, if I, in, in case I didn't. I don't want to, and I want to make sure you heard it, folks. You can be sad about what's going on in your life. Sometimes there are things that go on in my life that I'm not happy about all the time. Um, you could be if you're sick, if somebody in the family, something bad happens, relationship breaks up. Um, there are many things that we can be sad about. We're not happy. We're not. We're not told that we should be happy about the things that are terrible in our lives that, that go on. But we are told that we are to be content. We need to hold on to, to, to be content. And, why, and why, why would we be content if terrible things are happening? Because Jesus said that I will not leave you or forsake you. Because we have faith. Faith that God at the end of it all will still provide. If you look at the story of Job, he lost everything. But in the end of it all, he gained so much more. He gained so much more. He did. God will work it out. It, yes, things may change. Things may be different. Plan A may have seemed to have 
gone to hell, okay? But God has a plan B and a C and a D all the way past plan Z that he can make just as good as plan A. And he can convert that into plan A. He can transform it into plan A. That's why we continue to be content and we continue to worship the Lord irrespective and irregardless of what happens. So it's very important to understand that we can be sad, not happy about the trials that we go through in our, in our lives, things that happen, but we can still be spiritually and we can still be mentally content. I think that I had mentioned this, but I, I want to mention this in, because I'm summarizing everything that we've gone over now so that I can close tonight. I again think this, that we need to learn contentment because out in the world, throughout religion and even in, unfortunately, Christianity, we see many abuse materialism and covet a position or rank or, 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 or a, a place in and outside of the church because they lack contentment. They're not able to uh, be content where they are and allow God to promote and, and to move them forward in the way that he wants to do it. So many run ahead and jump ahead. So many are over anxious and they run a race, but were like the messenger that ran out, uh, ran or one just wanted to run and he runs. But when he gets to the king, the king says, what's the news? And he has no message with, to, to bring, but he just wants to run. But then you got the guy that's plodding along and he comes along a little bit slower, but when he gets there, he's got a message for the, for, for, for a king. This is a story in the Bible, folks, okay? But folks, this is our life. This is kind of the way we live. And we, we've got to kind of go with the flow of the Holy Spirit and allow God to do the work within us while we remain content. And so I really hope this really helps you. Um, it was a message that God wanted me to bring. I mean, we could do a, a, a long study on contentment but I think that what needed to be said has been said. I really do believe that those of you that are watching me here got the message and got the point. There are some of you that need to go back and watch and listen to this again. And there, with this message, really there needs to be a, some a deep sorrow and deep repenting because some of us have been selfish. Some of us are allowing the whole world to go to hell some of us are allowing our husbands and wives to be neglected and our children to be neglected because we're so focused on ourselves because we have not learned the gift or I should say the blessing. That's the, that's the word. We have not learned the blessing of contentment. Be content. You can be, and it's easy to do when you have a relationship in G, with Jesus Christ and you trust him. And if you're having issues doing that, you need to check your relationship with the Lord and, 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 and strengthen that. Ask God to be more real in your life. Make a new commitment, a recommitment. Ask him to, to, to really be the Lord of your life, not just Savior, but Lord, where he has a decision-making process in your life. And you're not the one that's sitting on the throne of your heart, always overruling the Lord. He's not sitting on the outside knocking and trying to get in, but he's in because you let him in. Okay, so I pray that this blesses you. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. I've already made, made my announcements earlier. You know, I, I love these Monday, I mean, I'm sorry, these Tuesday nights so much. I, I really do. I enjoy uh, being with you. One of the things I, I, I want to add real quick and we'll close it is if you have comments that you want to make, go ahead and make them. Um, and if you have questions, um, go ahead and ask them. I can't see them while I'm broadcasting, but as soon as I'm finished and uh, everything is transferred to wherever it needs to be, I'll go back and I'll look at it and I'll acknowledge uh, the questions. If you have a question about anything, I'll answer it. Do the best I can anyway. And uh, I always appreciate hearing from those that watch. And I want to just thank you again. God bless you. Lord bless you so much um, for, for coming on. You could have been somewhere else, but you're here this evening, and I appreciate it. You know what I always say, right? Keep your feet to the ground.
keep your head to the sky. God bless you, and I'll see you, God willing, next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. studying the Word. May the Lord bless you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.